And then he showed me that once it's suppressed, it puts your body at disease. That's where the word comes from. And watching that, I was like, oh, my God, that's me. And then he showed me the opposite side. And he said, you can change your reality with your thoughts. And Now, when I'd heard this in the past, I'm like, that's woo-hoo. I don't need to do any of that. I just need to grind. I need to work hard because that's what everybody in society's told me to do. And, and all of a sudden, I was like, well, it hasn't worked. So if it hasn't worked, you may as well try this guy's way because you know where you're going if you don't. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, I say this a lot, and I mean it every single time, folks. If, if you don't catch what I'm saying as far as the passion I have for the guests that I'm bringing on to the show here uh, in the most recent episodes, then man, I, I need to do a better job. But I'm super excited about the conversation we're about ready to have with Lee Wollard. He's actually coming to us from the UK. We were talking about this is morning time for me, but it's afternoon time for him. But, uh, you know, so that's the beauty of connection and the beauty of the internet, right? We can always have conversations with folks literally all over the world. So it's a lot of fun. So a little bit about Lee. Lee is a business and life coach, as I mentioned, from the UK. Since 2006, he's worked with global brands and entrepreneurs, helping them transform their businesses online and themselves individually. He's a successful husband, a father of three fantastic boys. And in 2019, he was diagnosed with bone cancer. And in that same time frame, through a journey of self-discovery and also help from a powerful mentor, realized the power of his thoughts. And we're going to dive into that a lot today. Super excited about that. Now, empowered with this discovery, and also beating cancer. He's on a mission to guide and support fellow business owners, entrepreneurs, and creating a compelling vision for their businesses, their lives, by taking purposeful action and making it a reality. So listening to that, a few bullet points, if some of that kind of went over your head, you're like purposeful reality or purposeful action or meaningful reality and and all of those kinds of things. If that was kind of, you know, what what do we mean by all that? That's exactly the discussion we're going to have today. This is going to be a lot of fun. Without any further ado, let's bring Lee onto the show. Let's have this great discussion. I just know it's going to be super powerful, super valuable. Yeah, let's dive in. Lee, welcome to the show, man. Randy, thank you for having me. Hello to all your listeners. Um, Wow, what a wonderful introduction. You took me down memory lane there a little bit. So uh, I'm looking forward to living up to some expectations. It'll be easy. That's the best part, right? I'm sure Usually the best things come when, when everybody's in flow, right? And so that's where I just feel (laughs) even just the the first little bit of conversation we had before we hit record here, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I always go through, you know, the 30,000 foot view bullet point list of the guests. I try to get a lot of the, the, the meat of, of who that person is. That way people can get to know you, but I would love for you to take a few minutes. Tell us about your story. You mentioned, or I mentioned in the, in the bullet points, obviously you, a family man from the UK about with cancer You've come through it. Anyways, I've already read it once. I don't want to read it again, but at the same time, yeah, take a few minutes. Tell us about yourself. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So I was actually born in Melbourne in Australia. So I spent most of my childhood growing up and going to school in Australia. Um, But my mother was from the UK, so I had dual nationality. At 19, I was the adventurous boy, you know, out of all of my friends where I was like, I can't stay here anymore. This All of my friends had got trade jobs and I'd gone off to university to learn business and Japanese. So I studied Japanese for six years in total and had these visions of being an international businessman flying into Japan. About a year into university in Australia, just thought, what am I doing? This just doesn't feel like it's my purpose. I don't know. All of my friends are earning money. I've got no money. I'm still at school, but I want to go see the world. So I worked the summer hard, working on a building site every second day because it was physical and then every second day um, selling mobile phones. So I was in a suit one day and in my scruffs the next. Saved up some cash, jumped on a plane and flew flew via Japan in case I didn't like the UK. I was going to turn around and go back to Japan and spend a year there and see what would happen. Little did I know my life was just about to change and go in a completely different course and direction. So... 
I settled really well here in the first year here, loved it. Decided to go to university on the night time to further my studies. So I did uh, some business and, and IT. That was back from 2000 to 2006. And the university encouraged me to set up a business in my final year. So just at that point, Google was really starting to roll in America, but not really known in the UK. So I did a 12,000 word dissertation on digital marketing and what it would look like. And I got 51 out of 100 for all of the effort I put in. And the the, uh, the tutor said, oh, look, it'll never work. And I said, oh, you know, I appreciate your your opinion and your honesty. And it just drove me more to go, this is going to work. I, was, I could already see it was working in America. I just wanted to, to see it here. Two years later, the university were paying me to come and do presentations at the university on digital marketing. So it was a wonderful, and again, I don't look at that as a, oh, poor me. I looked at it as great because they couldn't understand it. So it made me refine my message and be able to teach people. And then that was the start of my business journey. I was very, very fortunate that there were some great companies here in the UK that were wanting to expand the way they did their marketing. I managed to work with one of the oldest and most prestigious brands in the country. Uh, we ended up doing their digital marketing for nine years. They'd just been bought for a pound because they were going to receivership when we came on board. And nine years later, they sold 53 million. So it was a fantastic journey for me to be on. I learned from a very, very smart guy in business. And, and things were great. I had a what I would class as a lifestyle business because I really wanted to be there for my children. I'd, I'd run into several entrepreneurs and, and watched my father as well. My father worked really hard and I didn't spend a lot of time with him. And that's not saying he gave us none, but he had me at 17 as well. So he literally was out of school with a skateboard and uh, him and my mum had to get on with it. So he was doing the best he could with, with where he was, but I wanted to be more present. Plus, I'd spoken to a very, very successful UK businessman. He owned, I think, the fourth largest supermarket chain at that point. And uh, I said to him, you got any advice for someone young going into business? And he looked me in the eye and he said, spend as much time with your family, lad, because I never did. And it really cut me. And I thought, if these people keep telling me this or I'm, that's what I've got to do. So we always had this wonderful digital agency in the background that just gave us a, a very, very good life. But I never pushed too hard. 2006, my, I have my kids. My kids start growing up a little bit. They're going to school. I think I'm going to turn the dial up a little bit. I want to, you know, all of a sudden start achieving these levels. So I started coming home, being fully present as a dad. They go to bed and then I'd work from 10 till 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, sometimes 4 in the morning. And then this became a bit of a habit because I was I'd got into this world of I can do more, I can be more, and I can show my kids and we can have more. And I had this lifestyle all of a sudden where I was lacking sleep. I was present with my kids, which I was really proud with. I was giving it my absolute best at business, but the reality is I did zero looking after me, hmm. as in really understanding myself. I was running, I was doing marathons, or I was everything involved achievement, and, and I was pushing myself to the limit, not knowing what I was doing, but I also, hey, this young fit guy can take the world on and it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen to me. That's effectively the, the attitude that I had. But there were times where I was really struggling and I maybe went to the doctor and, I, and he said, it's stress. I can remember thinking the only time I feel stressed is when I come and see you because you told me that. And it's not <laughs> that I was arrogant or rude towards him. It's just the story that I had in my head was I don't get stressed. I can handle anything. So I've got these big shoulders and I can jet off when I'm 19 and be the first to go. And I can be the first to set up a digital agency in the UK and, you know, always feeling invincible. That's, that's the reality. And then 2019 on the morning of my twin boys, 10th birthday, uh, a result from the doctors changed the trajectory of my life. Um, I still, even going into the hospital and having the test thought I'm invincible. It's just a virus. I'll be over it. And I walked into the room and there was a panel of five doctors. And it was at that moment that I went, maybe this is a little bit more than a virus. Um, so they shared the news that I had bone cancer. And my first question to them was, how long have I got to live? And they said, well, at the moment, we can't really tell that. But And I said, is it two weeks? Is it two months? Is it two years? They said, look, it's, it's not two weeks. It's not two months, but it depends on which way you go. 
So there was no real clear-cut answer, but straight away my mind went, I'm causing this. I want to figure it out, literally straight away, um, because that's the way I'd always operated. I'd always taken responsibility for everything, lots of mistakes, uh, and just something in, in me was like, "This, you can figure this out. We started chemotherapy treatments. I felt terrible. I couldn't really serve the customers that we had. Um, I was sleeping till 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so then I wasn't taking my kids to school, which is something I'd done all their life. So now we had a routine shift and a change. And I was like, this is not how I wanted to be. Plus, I'd lost a couple of friends to cancer a couple of years prior, previous. They'd all done chemotherapy treatment. They'd all been told, hey, you're in remission and everything's good. And then it came back more aggressively. And I was like, I'm not going that way. But I also did have moments where I was thinking, am I actually going to see my boys grow up and become men? Am I going to walk down the beach and talk about the life and go on the travels that my wife and I discussed when we become empty nesters? So in those moments, I was like, you've got your backs against the wall. You've got two options. You can either lay down and accept these or you can go find out what's going on. So naturally, I'm starting to look. And when you start to look, things start to show up and a uh, and scrolling through social media one evening and an advert pops up from a wise gentleman saying, your way's not working, why don't you try mine? And I thought, I'm not sure who he is, but he seems to know me. I watched a little presentation on what he did and I went, whoa, he knows something that I don't. And I'm, I'm willing to go a little bit deeper and, and listen here. So that person was Bob Proctor and he became my first mentor. And it Unfortunately, I waited till I was at, a, at a, my back against the wall before I grabbed a mentor. I always tried to figure everything out on my own and I'd done okay. But if you actually look at where I was, I was financially not too bad, but I was very, very poor inside. Um, and what I didn't realize was, and he pointed it out to me, he's like, Lee, you caused this, you can fix it. He said, it all begins with your thoughts. And then... Learning from him then started to shift the way that I operated and then we're on to the next part of my journey. So I've learned a little bit about your journey and even just that description that you shared, that's super intriguing. Uh, obviously the, the turmoil going through that, it, it resonates so much with me because it's, it's not the same, but it's very similar. Like I've lost my parents both to cancer, cancer, that just that term and that word, that, that it, whatever it, you want to call it is just, it resonates or it hits home for me so badly. That young age of working, grinding, doing it all on my own. That's what I believed was the only way to do it. I quickly discovered through some trial and error and some turmoil, like you said, kind of getting slapped over the head by this advertisement for yourself. For me, it was a book in a library, kind of just slap me upside the head and say, Hey, take a look at this and you'll discover new things. That's, that's where your story is very similar to mine because once you discover it, once you see it, you can't go back. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of it is that once you become aware, it's like you don't see anything in life ever the same way again. Mm -hmm. And you can almost see possibilities and potential in people and in things that they can't see themselves because they just, they're just not open to it yet. Go back to that. You said, you mentioned, you saw an ad for Bob Proctor and he says, Hey, you're the way you're doing I, I'm not going to mess up yep. exactly how you you're said it. Not what working, you're doing why things, don't you try mine? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you try mine? T take me back to that moment. And you said that it's like, okay, yeah, this guy obviously has got some things figured out. Mm -hmm. But can you really pinpoint some of the thoughts and the feelings that were going through your mind as far as uh, how you were able to pivot from that? I'm going to do it all by myself. I'm yep. just going to grind and work yep. to this new awareness yep. part of life. Absolutely. So he did a diagram that talked about when you um, don't have the knowledge or the awareness is the word you used. And that word, although I knew the word, I never really, really understood what the word meant. And actually now I know it's one of the most important words in our language that if you can have an awareness of literally everything that's going on in your life and the reason why, okay, that's your first step. Then you can start thinking the right way, taking action the right way, and then your result changes. So he talked about... Um, the thoughts that you had and the impression that you had uh, received from your parents, from your schooling, from the news, from social media now, whatever it may be, how this creates your environment. Now, although I had fantastic parents, they were young, 
but they had conditioning of their own that they got from their parents. And so this was getting passed down our gene pool and our, our DNA. And again, I'm always forever grateful to my parents for the way they were. They were young when they had me, they were amazing, but they did have um, conditioning that they were passing on to us. Now, for me, what happened, I was holding everything in from a young child because well, I didn't want to make a mistake or I didn't want somebody to raise their voice or, and I just thought that was the way it was. And then through school, once things became more challenging and I became an adult, it was like, don't make a mistake because it's a reflection on you. And at school, you know, they focus on the big red X rather than, you know, what you've done well. And so I was coming out thinking, I used to wear no fear t-shirts with losing's not an option. So I even labeled it and went, I don't want to lose. So it stopped me from taking, let's call it risks because, and I was fearful. So I'd had thoughts that were going on inside of me that were worry, doubt, fear, which created an anxiety, but I never labeled it as anxiety. I thought someone who was anxious was, you know, shaking and not knowing that actually that's what was going on inside of me. And what that had done was suppressed inside me over a 30 year period to the point where my body had gone, that's enough. I can't take this anymore. You've got to stop. But I didn't have the skills or the awareness to know what it was. I just thought that was life and, hey, this is my ticket. And But I wanted to find out why. And then he showed me that once it's suppressed, it puts your body at disease. That's where the word comes from. And watching that, I was like, oh, my God, that's me. And then he showed me the opposite side. And he said, you can change your reality with your thoughts and that. Now, when I'd heard this in the past, I'm like, that's woo-hoo. I don't need to do any of that. I just need to grind. I need to work hard because that's what everybody in society's told me to do. And, and all of a sudden, I was like, well, it hasn't worked. So if it hasn't worked, you may as well try this guy's way because you know where you're going if you don't. And I started to dive into his work and understanding the subconscious mind and what it did. And at first, that word didn't mean anything to me. I knew I had a mind. I knew that I saw things in my world, and that's what dictated what I did but I didn't realize that I could change that. So the first few months of practicing, putting the right message in, I didn't see a lot of change. Like my health didn't change, but I was so determined to go. He was so convincing that he knows it. He gave me enough examples of, of case studies where he had, I started to see some other videos from other people who experienced or been in environments, Joe Dispenza, where people are cheating, and I've gone, there's too much here. This is something that I don't know. It's a side that I am willing to investigate because I don't want to go that way. And I want to see my boys grow up and I want to be there and I want to be the best version of myself. So once I started to change that story, all of a sudden then my health started to improve. Now, a month after starting the treatment, it was a drug treatment. I, it got to, I remember the day, it was the day before my birthday and I was thinking, I don't want to do this. It's making me feel crap. I'm just going to stop. And a day later, my wife looked at me and said, you're not enjoying this, are you? I said, no, not at all. She goes, why don't you stop? And I said, funny you say that, but I did yesterday. She goes, I know you. She goes, I knew you would. She said, that's fine, but if things get worse, you promise me you go back on. I said, no problem. Now, I made a decision to not tell the doctors. I just thought, I'm, I just want to do this journey. So every couple of months, I was going back for a blood test. And after three months of doing this work, my blood uh, results started to change and shift. They said, everything's going in the right direction. Continue with the treatment. And I'm like a nervous little boy here thinking, oh, should I tell her? Because she was quite an intimidating lady. Um, so I didn't tell her. And another three months go by, I go back again. Now I'm half what I was, but I'm still mm. way over everybody else. Go back another three months later. So this is about nine months into the journey. She's like, Lee, you're in remission. Everything's been working fantastic. And I thought, I can't go on with this. I feel like I'm lying to somebody. I said, look, I've got something to tell you, but I actually stopped the drug treatment in November last year. She went, what? You don't know what you're doing? Now, I'm not sitting here saying if anyone's listening, if they've got cancer, that you just go out and stop and this is all going to, you've got to go on your own journey. And you have to have the awareness and you have to understand why your, your body has manifested what's going on. But again, I've seen too many people that have shifted it and I've helped people who have shifted it that have been told they've got six months to live. I've also had people come to me that have had six months to live that haven't really understood it or dug deeper and they, they haven't kept going. So 
breaking the news to her. And then I was like, look, I'm so grateful for everything you've done. You've supported me, da da. but I made a choice and I've gone a different way and clearly it's working. So I want to continue on with that. So again, I'm very, very grateful to the hospital. They were amazing at, at running the tests and the results or whatever, but this was the route that, that I chose to go. Love that too. So the things that I'm hearing, the pattern. So I, I, I try to put things in patterns in my own mind. So let's, let me see if I can unpack that a little bit and have you kind of articulate even a little bit further. So you made a decision so that you were the, even the results you were having on the chemotherapy were not the results you were looking for. So it kind of goes back in the same pattern you were having in your business life and your family life. You made a decision that something was going to change. With that decision, you had a belief from a mentor and then from your wife, it sounds like, that you could do it which crafted a, probably a different vision in your mind of what was actually possible. But then you stepped into it and then you made it a reality. It, and that was kind of very bullet point ish, like perfect. very high level, but is, is yeah. Perfect. Can you, can we kind of unpack that a little bit more as far sure. as like how you, the process. Yep. So I I'm envisioning folks. See, now let me just kind of preface this with saying that folks, I'm actively working on these types of thoughts and ideas for myself every day of my life, ever since I've become aware and discovered it as well. So having the discussion with someone that is actively doing it as well, that's where it's super exciting for me. So that's where I just want to try to unpack that a little bit more. Hmm. If someone's like, okay, that I hear what you're saying, but they're trying to become aware. We talked about the awareness piece. How can we help them get a little bit deeper as far as the, the feeling and understanding? We talked about the word faith. Anyways, I'll leave it there. Yeah, please sure. take that and unpack that a little bit further. Absolutely. So patterns are a fantastic thing because that's what leads me to where I am now. So mm. what Bob had taught me was shifting the, the story that you were telling yourself. Your old story and your conditioning is what's creating the results in your life you're getting right now. Now, you may not have realized that other external um, things in your environment have, have led you to where you are, but the reality is, and hopefully your listeners are connecting to that, it's not my story. It's what's happening in your life where you can not blame your past or your upbringing. It's a, oh, I can see where that could potentially have impacted it. Okay, what's this way that I can change? So my first story was my health wasn't great. I wanted to be, and, and actually when it was really getting bad was I was playing football in the garden with my boys and it, it just hit me and I felt this like hundred pound weight on my chest and shoulders and I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. Now what I'd done was gone. I want my health to be great. And the first thing I'm going to focus on is playing football with my boys. It's really important to me. We have a great laugh when we do it. So I started to build a vision of me playing football with my boys and going down to the local field and they've just cut the grass and the sun's out and, you know, they both take me on and, you know, we roll around and have a bit of a laugh and, and the feet getting into that feeling was what I had to do. Now, at first I was inexperienced at it. I'd never really done it. It was imaginary, but I was like, this is what you have to do. So every morning before my family woke up, I would get up and I would do this for 20 minutes to half an hour. I'd be thinking about me playing football with the boys. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, my, my health is getting better. I started playing football with my boys and somebody had said to me along the journey, and again, awareness, I didn't really, I heard it, but it never, it'll be, you'll be playing football with your boys, it'll be so, or it'll be something better. And at the time, I'm thinking, do you know, I just want to get to that point. I'm not bothered if it's any better than that. I just want to be well enough to be in the garden where they don't think their dad is not the same person he used to be. Little did I know that seven months later or eight months later, just as I'm getting better or being told that I'm in remission, the coach of their football team has to move away and they've not got a coach. And all the parents are like, Lee, you'd be the perfect person for it. Now, initially I'm like, whoa, I grew up in a different country. I didn't play this game, but, but I had a way of connecting with the kids. So I sometimes stepped in and you know helped out when they couldn't, the other coaches couldn't do it or whatever. So I became the coach of their football team and they hadn't won a lot for a lot of years. They were good, great kids, brilliant, brilliant kids, but they're not, you know, in sports, sometimes kids are just die hard about the sport. None of our kids are. They just love to play. They love to get out. They have a good laugh with their mates. If they win, they win great for them. Anyway, I got these 17 surrogate sons. And the first thing I started to notice was a lot of them were very fearful of making a mistake. Oh, that reminds me of a young version of me. So the first and only thing I implemented was we're going to make mistakes and that will help us get forward. 
I remember the first kid doing it and going, and he was smart, he could see. And then that was it, he took off. So we used him as an example and said, look how he's doing that. So they all start to build the confidence. Well, I took over halfway through one season. We started implementing, you could see them improving. I didn't really do anything skill-wise that was going to help them. The next season, we went undefeated until the last game. So as much as that story is great, I also showed them to create a vision for what they would love. I had a vision for what I would love. I got something better. They, We had a moment where uh, somebody had driven past on a parade bus and the boys were training and they saw it. They said, we'd love to do that if we get promoted. And, and I said, look, that's a little bit extreme in kids' football, but would you love to get promoted? And they're like, yeah, but we don't really win much. And the next season we're there experiencing it. So that was my first real taste of me creating a vision for me and, and being delivered something better from the universe, from having 17 boys that literally they just changed their belief in themselves. Skill-wise, they're still the same skill level-wise. There's lots of other teams with more skillful kids, but we just had this unbelievable belief in what we were doing without it being that forceful belief. So then I watched and saw kids adapt it like this, and I went, whoa. So you talked about patterns before, and I was like, if I can do that in my health and change my health, if we can do that in kids' football and kids can do it that quickly, what happens if I apply this to business or to my relationships? And that's where life certainly changed for me. <laughs> and that's where you were up to this current date, right? Mm. Helping businesses, entrepreneurs mm. craft that vision. So let's mm. go into the vision piece. That's another big part of this, right? We've yeah. talked about awarenesses. We've talked about making decisions and having beliefs, but without that vision yeah. of where you're going, yeah. I mean, it's like you're going to get stopped before you even get started. Talk about that. You mentioned about the, the boys and let me, so I'm coming from the U S you keep saying football. Let me just preface. Soccer. So this is soccer. <laughs> yeah. Soccer in, in the European, uh, other than the United States. Right. I just thought that was funny. I, I've heard, uh, you say several times Australian football. rules is football yeah. as well. So yeah. it's different. <laughs> yes. So it's just interesting there again, the, the differences between, uh, uh, people and where they're from. But anyways, uh, back to, uh, vision. Hmm. Talk about that. How, mm. so when you're working with someone that they're starting to become aware, yep. they're ready to get in the driver's seat. They're yep. ready to start making some different decisions uh, yep. based on the pattern that they've been fed or to believe that is accurate, right? Talk about that. Talk mm. about how you help someone start to craft a vision that is compelling and that's going to help them drive forward through the, you know, the stuff, the day-to-day -day activities of, of getting to that vision. I think the first thing to address with that is I can remember my early years of business. People go, you need a business plan. You need to do this. So we go get taken off in this journey that you've got to plan out this whole journey. And truthfully, as an entrepreneur, that's way too overwhelming. So I never really had a business. I tried it maybe six times and just went, this is too much for me. I don't, uh, the, it, I didn't have the experience anyway. So if I didn't have the experience, how could I plan? The only step that I could really plan was the next one I was going to take. So once I'd learned about creating a vision for something I would love, that was the question that I always got told to ask myself. And if it, you know, I could easily go, well, I'd love to do this because I already know it and I could teach people pretty easily and I could have the, the path of least resistance and a, and a good business. But it's not what I'd love. I wanted to help people at a deeper level. And I'd always, from listening to Tony Robbins tapes when I was 14 in my dad's car to seeing you know, inspirational people change people's life. I'm like, I want to do that. You know, so I always look at even the cancer thing. I look at that as a, a gift. Now, some people go, what? You had cancer? How could you see that as a gift? I'm like, without that, it wouldn't have pushed me to find out where I am now. So creating that vision for playing football with my boys brought things into my life that I couldn't have planned for. Then when I started to implement it into my business, things started to shift in. I knew what I wanted. I, I really wanted to coach people and help them make an impact on the world. I didn't know how that was gonna look. And funnily enough, the pattern followed the same. The first three months, I didn't really have a customer or, or, or who I could coach. And then one came, then another, then another. So things, the, the universe wanted to test me to see if I really wanted it. Plus I had to get a bit better at the actions that I was taking. 
So I started to coach more and more people. I started to see patterns in them. And then what we did with the vision was go, what would you love? And you had to write down exactly what you would love. Now, quite often we get stuck in that middle bit, which is, well, here's where I am now. That's what I would love. But, but I need to know all of the steps along the way because that's what we get taught when actually that's not what it is. There was a study done at Stanford that showed us how the mind works and the mind really only needs to know the first step and the last step and it figures everything out in the middle. So when you give yourself that permission, it takes away all the pressure where you go, okay, I don't need to know the how now, but I need to know what that next step is. And sometimes that can be difficult because people are like, yeah, but I've got a million steps to do. Cool. Right, write those million steps down. It's never a million. It's 25 or 30 max <laughs> or 10. But you write them all down and there's going to be one that will stick right out at you. And that's the one you take. And you do not focus on any of the others until you've done that one and done it to the best of your ability. And when you're happy with that one and you think it's taken you forward or actually it hasn't taken me forward, but I've learned that's not what I want. Right, I'll take the next one. And you just keep repeating that pattern. Then all of a sudden it takes the, the, the fear away of doing anything or the procrastination as, as people call it, where I don't know what to do and I'm so stressed now and every day it's the same thing. And then before you know it, days are going past and you're like, I haven't actually achieved anything because all I've done is just got stuck in my head. And if you think of like a, a jug of water, it's just filling over the top and there's no space for you to think creatively. And this is the pattern I see in everybody. Everybody who's, who's stuck, no matter multi-million dollar business or you're trying to get a business off the ground, it's the same pattern. Yes. And it's that discovery phase of realizing that that's the truth is, has, let me just say it for myself, has been one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Mm -hmm. But I will say that working through that and going through that journey, like you said earlier in the, in the discussion, we're all on our own journey and we need to discover what that is, but with some help, with some uh, guidance, yep. mentorship, we can kind of bridge that gap from this mundane life that we're not necessarily fulfilled with yep. to a life that you really, you can't even begin to imagine the beauty that, that lies ahead. And that's yep. so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. It's a much so nicer place to be as well. If you've if you've been in business or you're in a job and it, you just kind of think, oh, this is me. And you maybe done it for ten or twenty years, or you've just you're in stress most days or survival mode. I was like that for thirteen years, and I just thought that was the norm that came with running a business. And it's not. You can change that reality. You can make it where you go. Do you know what? It's really nice to wake up today. And yeah, I'm going to be hit with some challenges but I know I can solve them. Being in control. Mm. It's in control of, I mean, it's still chaotic. My life is still chaotic. I have things like you said, show up that I'm not necessarily prepared for, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to take action because I'm confident and have belief and have faith in the outcome of this vision that I have for myself, for my business. You're asking me before we hit record here, what, what I'm doing. And yeah, I just, I have a vision. I don't know how I'm going to get there yet. I've pivoted a few times. But it's a, it's, you said the word permission. I love mm. that word permission. I've given myself permission to fail forward and continue to keep going no matter what. It's getting in your reps. You mentioned that uh, mm. in the discussion we had as well. Being willing to do the reps to gain a pattern recognition and some awareness is so crucial uh, to any accomplishment. In How life, do you feel? Business, family, life. How do you feel having that operating in the background with you? It's been different. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit challenging because mm -hmm. it completely has gone against everything I've ever been taught mm -hmm. growing up from school, from my parents, from everything. And so I've done it through trial and error. It's like, mm -hmm. I'll learn something, I'll become aware of something and I'll use myself as a guinea pig and I'll go give it a shot. I'll give it a try. And if I get a result, not right or wrong, but I get a result and then I can be able to make a different decision. It's like I a superpower, isn't it? It it's makes life begin to be fun mm. and fun and fun, not like exciting. Like I'm on a roller coaster, like screaming from the, yeah. you know what I mean? It's that's so fun. I just mean it's, mm -hmm. it's an engagement yeah. an active engagement versus just sitting passive being bounced around of, yeah. you know, doing this, doing that. It's just, uh, that's what I mean by fun. Mm. Do I still have challenges? Of course. Do I still but even the challenges can become fun because, you know, okay, I'm not going to hold, um, address it or approach it like I used to. I'm going to approach it like this, knowing full well as I, as I approach that particular challenge, I'm going to have the resources. I'm going to figure this out. 
Yeah, because you you're always that that's doing possible. It. You're always yeah, doing you learn that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I never really believed that it could in mm -hmm. myself. And yeah, I I I believe that wholeheartedly mm -hmm. now. So I appreciate everything that you shared there. One piece that you did mention that I want to go a little bit deeper on, and you said uh, finding out something that you love. Now, meaning the question that you asked yourself, yeah. the way, the question that, that it's just a little bit of a different spin, but of what is it that you truly want yeah. is a question that I ask myself all the time, continuously. And I, and I, in full transparency, I even struggle a little bit to this day of discovering what that is. You, you use the word love. Yeah. And I, I love that. I actually might pivot my own question to ask myself. Yeah. But then you mentioned the word permission. Yeah. How does somebody, when they know, when they know, they know in their, in their being what they're supposed to go do, yeah. like, you know what I mean? They understand it. They've yeah. become aware, yeah. but they don't give themselves permission yeah. to allow it to come into their, you know, to their being. Yeah. Can you go into that a little bit more as far as helping somebody might get a little bit more permission to step into that reality? Sure. That straight away would put a flag up for me that it's a self image issue. So, and again, I don't want you to label yourself with that and go, oh, I've got a self image issue. I can't do it. Go a bit deeper and start understanding what a self image is because that story that you're telling yourself has come from your conditioning from when you're younger. Maybe an event happened through your teen years or um, a parent might have passed away and then all of a sudden you're stuck in this story of, well, that could happen to me or I'm not getting out of it. Your, your self-image dictates the things that you do. And that doesn't mean, oh, I have to be different. I have to be, you know, overconfident. Well, that's pretending. You've got to have an inner, be centered internally and, and an inner um, acceptance of yourself first for everything. Because otherwise, and again, I did this for so long, from being a teenager into my early, well, late 30s, I projected to the ex uh, outside world that everything was fine. But internally, I had a very poor self-image and a very poor story going on. And you have to be able to first again recognize those and go, okay, that, that needs to stop because that's not serving me. And also, if you, if you struggle with that for yourself, so let's say you want to look in the mirror and you go, you know, I'm really proud of you. If you find that difficult, okay, you got to keep doing it. And it, some people can't even do that because they go, well, I'm just, that's not true. But if you have children or you have friends or you have a partner, would you want them to feel that same way? If you said, I'm proud of you and they, oh no, I, I don't really want you to feel it. Of course you wouldn't. So acknowledge and become aware that if you wouldn't want somebody else to feel like that when they're told they're proud of, work on yourself. And it does take getting the reps in. Okay, and it can be something as simple as that. And I like to, to do it in the mirror when I first started doing this because I wanted to look myself in the eye because I knew it wasn't serving me the way I was and it was time for me to change it. And the only way I could change that was by having a conversation with myself eye to eye. Okay, be proud of yourself. You are having a good go. And actually just worry about today. Worry about the step that you're going to take. Not worry as in, oh my God, I'm don't think about the future too much. The past now is the past that's gone anyway. And we've all got the past that certain things we may not be happy about what we did. Do you know what? So what? It was experience. So I ask myself every morning, what would I love? And again, for some people that maybe find that difficult, we all think we've got, oh, I'd love a big house. I'd love a car. I'd love a boat. Or I'd love a plane or all of these big material things. But I start with something simple. What would I love in my health today? I'd love to eat well. I would love to drink fresh, clean water. We sometimes take those things for granted. In fact, often we do. So I start with my health because I know that I can impact that. I'm the only person that can impact my health. Nobody else can, really. really. Then I think about my relationships. So some days, what would I love today? I want to be a fully present dad today. So on Saturday, I got to spend time with just one of my boys. And I was like, we're going to have a really, I'm going to make today a really special day. where we're... Now, I didn't go over the top and, I'd have to even spend much money at all. It was more about the quality of what we were doing. So every day I think about a relationship, either with individuals of my son, as a family, as a collective, or even with my wife. So my wife and I had a lunch date today. We don't do it often, but I have a reminder on my phone that goes off at the start of every month and I plan it. We haven't had the opportunity recently, so today we went. 
I never used to do any of that stuff because I was too busy in my business and I couldn't do it. And if she rang me when I was at work, sometimes I'd be like, oh, couldn't you wait till I got home? That's not how I want it to be. And I'm not like that now. So those two things are great because your health, you control. Your relationships, it involves other people and that usually the ones in your inner circle that you love. Then when you practice those and you start seeing the results shifting in your life, you can practice the ones around business. And again, some people, I want more money. Money's a byproduct. It's a byproduct of you serving people and providing a solution and whatever that may be. It can be a product or it can be a service. But again, what you start to do is practice. And at first, you're going to be unskilled. It's not all going to just flow and just, like I said, for me, it's usually three months. I don't know why, but everything takes me three months before I start seeing anything. That's okay. Just keep going. Keep repeating it. Get your reps in, like you said earlier, and... Then you can have what you love in all areas of your life. A beautiful life, bridging that gap Absolutely. from where you are now to that dream life in the future. Absolutely. That's one thing I love to say here on the podcast. So one thing I'd like to go even a little bit further deeper on as well. I love this conversation. Thank Let me you. Just first off, me say too. that. Yeah. So it's triggering so many different ideas and thoughts in my own mind. So let me express <laughs> gratitude for you coming on and sharing so much wisdom. But the question that was kind of coming to my mind, and let me see if I can articulate this in a way. That, that you can catch the past and then obviously take it uh, a little bit further is that when I became aware, I call them triggers. When I would get triggered, it's like, so what triggered even that question for myself was when you said, when you would speak to yourself in the mirror, how do you feel when you do that, right? Yep. So you would, anxiety, right? It wouldn't feel right. To me, that would be a trigger. I call them triggers. Yep. I'm curious if you have a term or if you have a yep. way of, of articulating that. When I discovered those triggers in my life, something somebody would either say, something yep. like an uh, external circumstance would happen, yep. trigger me, I would instantly go into my pattern of negativity, which then would give me a result that I wasn't looking for. Yep. Can you talk about, like I said, I call them triggers, mm. talk about how people when they're trying to push through yep. this anxiety yep. of how they feel to bridge that gap to this dream life that we've been, we've been talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell us more about that. Yeah. I call them triggers too. So you're looking Do for you? the triggers okay. and they come all the time. And when you're aware all of them, the they are thick and fast in all. <laughs> so one of the best ones I love to talk about is um, how you operate in traffic. So if someone mm. cuts you off or you're stuck behind someone going too slow or, you know, all, we all know them. The triggers, the, the, the one in the car is the most obvious one because it's a straightaway result. A lot of people just react. So if you notice that your pattern is to react in circumstances, okay, that's the point you need to pause. Now, again, I go, whoa, that's all woo-hooey. I haven't got time to pause. I'm too busy. That person cut me off. I let them in, but they didn't let me in and blah, blah. All of a sudden, you're in a bad vibration and a bad state. So again, notice that particular trigger, and it can come up in anything. Money, money's a big one. That triggers a lot of people. Okay, so again, you're looking for the way you either react or respond. And my goal in the early days was, okay, I need to respond. Now, it was a habit that I picked up through my conditioning, through my parents who picked up from their parents, who picked up from their parents, and we reacted. And a lot of the times it was not done maliciously, but it was done through fear, it was done from being unskilled, and actually just created a really um, intense environment. And that was the pattern. So for me and my family now, what we try to do is before we react, we try to respond. And we're, I've been doing this for quite a while now. I'm not perfect at it. I reacted at something uh, just before the weekend. And I, but I always, at the end of the day, reflect on my day and go, oh, I could have been, truthfully, in that moment, I went, damn, I could have been a lot better in that moment. But I don't hold on to it. I just go, right, okay, you could have been. Okay, let's not do that again. Okay, now I was never really one that reacted in traffic. I'm fairly generous but every now and again and and you might be stuck behind somebody slow but you never know it might be an old granny who's not very confident of being on the road you might get cut off by somebody but they might be rushing to go to the hospital and they're not thinking straight so a lot of the times you don't know but sometimes it just might be someone who doesn't care and they think they're more important but you know what you lose three seconds it's really not that big a deal but yeah i look for the triggers that that would set me even around business, is there any anxiety? I look at the people that I coach. Often with business, there's, there's a lot of triggers. It can be other people. It can be frustration. 
more often than not, it's the frustration with themselves. They're doing the same thing in repeat over and over and over again, getting the same result. Now, you can't say that to somebody directly because everyone goes, shut up, you don't know what you mean. But when you become aware of it yourself, you go, okay, I've been doing that same step, that same thing quite a lot. Let's maybe pause for a minute and have a look. Is there a different way that I could do this? So the power of the question, what would I love? Is there a way that I could do this differently? And, more, and I never used to stop and ask myself questions. It was just get up, go and force. And, and you mentioned something there before about people pushing through the self-image thing. One of the things I really learned was I used to do everything by force and willpower. And it really didn't serve me. What I've got used to now is, okay, let's just accept it and let it come to you. And go on a discovery journey and understand what it means. And I love reading now. I never used to read at all. I love reading now because there's so much wisdom in his books from 100 years ago and more and, and recently where you can learn what does our cybernetic system do in us? Okay, why do we act the way that we do? Okay, well, I don't want to do that. And you, one of the best things I learned was read one chapter per week. And in that one chapter, read it, you know, on the Monday, try and read the whole thing if you can or Monday, Tuesday. And then the rest of the time, go back and look at the bits you highlighted and the bits that stuck out to you, and then work on one or two of those. And if you do that over the course of a year, two years, three years, you are going to shift the way you operate. Now, I'm not saying change as a person. The reality is you are going to, but we want you to be happier internally, not have this external life where you just think, I can't wait to go to bed, or I can't wait for the weekend, or I can't wait to drink this evening, or whatever you do to do distract yourself from what your current reality is because I know for me it wasn't the way I wanted to live and that's what set me off on the discovery journey. That uncertainty, the, the feeling of just not being comfortable even in, in your own skin as far as the activities that you're doing, you're, you know you're not getting necessarily the results, you might have different things in your life but at the same time just inside you're just, uh, it's just not fulfilling and as you mentioned for yourself it, it resulted and obviously this trauma of having your bone cancer incident, which then you came through, which obviously we're super grateful for. But the ability then, I love that teaching of reacting versus responding. I, when I discovered that, when I learned that for me personally, that was, and like you said, I'm not great at it every day of the week, but at the same time, I catch myself a lot faster than I ever used to. I almost consider it like almost like an outer body experience. Like you can see yourself once you, I'm not going to proclaim that I'm really, really good at this because I'm obviously a, a work in progress, but I, I'm getting better, but I can almost feel myself in a situation where it's like an outer body experience. And I'm like observing the conversation or observing yeah. the traffic versus like you said, reacting just like, like tense. I feel like you're tense, not knowing where to go. It's like you're, you're being defensive when you're reacting versus responding where you can just kind of sit back like you said, kind of relax, have things flow to you, whether it's the conversation. Yeah, I just love that that piece of the reacting versus responding. Is there any other pieces of that as far as mm. the wisdom, as far as helping people recognize? You mentioned the traffic. That's a great one. I love that because we all experience that. Is there anything else along with that reacting or responding that you yeah. could go a little deeper on as well? Everything, everything you do in life. <laughs> because like you just said then, and this is, shows you where you are in your journey, you start to see almost like things before they happen. Mm -hmm. So you've had this conversation as you've gone, I don't want to act like that in the traffic, so I'm going to stop. Or I'm going to watch my kids play sport and I'm not going to shout from the sidelines because I'm frustrated with my life during the week. And then I go and watch these kids who are, teenagers learning to play a game but i'm imposing on them and i'm using this experience because i've seen it so many times you go to kids sport there's a par parent or parents that are frustrated generally they're stressed at work they go and expect these kids to be operating at the level they could with 30 years more experience and they can't and the kids then become insular or stressed because our dad or mum's at the sideline shouting so it doesn't help the kids so one of the things you said there about having being able to spot it or that that um reality it's a different reality that again feels like a superpower to me because i go okay and look sometimes certain things happen in an instant now i believe that's the universe giving you a test to go okay pal yeah not as good as you think you are you need to just keep working on that and i love those ones because i go 
in all transparency, I had one yesterday. I had one yesterday, and I'm not, like you said, I'm sitting here thinking about it. And I'm not beating myself up over it, but at the same time, I'm like, man, I really, I could have handled that a lot better yeah. than I did, and I and I need to have a discussion with this individual about that that situation. But yeah, please continue. Perfect. And, yes, and you're, you're right. right, and it does. But the beauty about that is now you've got an awareness. So instead mm. of then probably in the past version, I know I would have gone, oh, that wasn't my fault, or you shouldn't have done that, Darden becomes an argument. You can't make good decisions and that for you and for anyone else involved when you're in a, a frustrated and uh, negative um, frequency or vibration. Okay, what this does is just allow you to become, and know everybody I speak to, we all want to be creative as in, well, you know, I'd like to do something here or I'd like to have more. We all want more. That's part of life. It doesn't mean you have to have more material. It can be more love. It can be um, more time in nature. It can be whatever you want. But you can't make those um, key decisions well when you're in this intense mode. What tends to happen is you just follow it up with more bad decisions because you're in a um, negative uh, or constrictive um, way of thinking. What this does is just give you time and space. So I gave you the analogy before of like a jug of water and it just, if you think of your mind like a jug of water and it's full to the top and it's always spilling over, you, you've got no space for creativity. That can be even just, do you know what, today I'm going to make the day with my children really special or I'm going to take my wife on a date and it's going to be all my partner on it and it's going to be special. That doesn't mean I have to spend a lot and it looks great. It can be the quality of the conversation. It can be opening the door when you, Little things that you maybe don't do in normal days that you just go, hey, taking the coat off. How was your day? Asking empowering questions, being interested rather than interesting or thinking, oh, talking about business or where I'm going on, the, you know, where we want to go next. It's, it just gives you space. You're trying to create space all the time, getting away from that stressed overflowing to go, I've got some space. And we all know it. How many people go on holiday? Oh, I only relax whenever I go on holiday or I only relax on the weekend when I'm having a beer in the garden. Again, flags. If they're the only times you can relax, you're not putting these things in place. And again, I'm not judging anyone who does it. I did it for so long, but I thought that was the only way to relax. Now I do this, I go, this is a much, much, much better way of living. So much better. I agree wholeheartedly for myself as well. So I encourage the listeners to... Listen to that again. Listen to the, the a lot of the wisdom that's being shared. If you can kind of catch what we're saying, internalize it, become aware that there's a different way of being, different way of re responding versus reacting. There's just so many different pieces that we've even shared so far that, yeah, if you can just kind of catch what we're saying and just put it into action, it, little baby steps. It's yeah. going to be, it's a journey. It's not, you don't go from beginning to the result like in an hour. But at the same time, you can catch yourself doing certain things in certain ways and quickly, relative, I always like to use the word relatively, relatively quickly begin to see a result that is favorable, which then allows you then to continue to respond favorable and then react to different things in different ways when you are bombarded with, like you said, sometimes things just show up in your face and you're like, you're just triggered. I, like I said, I used to like to use the word triggered. So I'd love yeah, to I ask love you, so can you remember the moment when the first person said to you, wow, you've really changed. There's something going on. What have you been doing? Can you remember that moment? Maybe not the exact moment of the first person, but I will say that it, it has happened mm. and it is happening. And how do the you feel? that I was well, fantastic, mm. meaning it, it really starts to feel good when you're obviously being recognized, I guess, yeah. from someone you care about, whether it's, to me, it was my family. Mm -hmm. I was not necessarily the most present person. I wasn't necessarily the most nice person <laughs> to my family growing Which up. Which is so hard to believe when I'm sat here opposite you because you do not radiate that at all. But it's because of the work that mm. I've done with all of the things that we've discussed so far in this episode. And mm. we've just scratched the surface. I'm 15 plus years into my journey of mm. getting to where I am today. Mm. Now, if you would have asked me 15 years ago, would you be sitting in this uh, virtual room with you today, Lee? Mm. I would have said, you're out of your mind. There is mm. no way, number one, that I could, number one, that I would want to, but it absolutely is where I am today. And I'm looking forward to this vision, as I mentioned earlier, of where we're going in the future mm. because of the results that I've had 
yeah. um, because of these new awarenesses. I appreciate that, you asking. That recognition that you get is just a lovely little signal every now to go, hey, I'm on the right track. I'm not after people patting me on the back all the time of saying it, but I know certainly everybody that I've helped, that moment that they come in and go, whoa, my wife has noticed or the kids have noticed or this has changed in our household or somebody at work has said. And, and again, that's just sometimes what you need to be able to go, this is where I'd rather be than over here in this stressed or overwhelmed or operating how I really don't didn't think life was ever going to be it's like the freedom when you're a child you know that you want that freedom like ah, everything's just going to work out that's effectively where we are now which is just it's such a stunning way to live yes absolutely Jim Rohn which is a huge mentor of mine talks about the day that turns your life around and I've had those those moments and I'm sure we all have to a certain extent. You've mentioned about yours and your story as well, but it's when you look back, it's like you asked me about to pinpoint it. Mm -hmm. I can't sit here exactly and tell you, but at the same time, the journey has been exciting. It's been challenging, but at the same time, yeah, it's been very, very enjoyable yeah. as well. I appreciate and enjoy the challenge. Questions. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy the challenge as well. It's great. So one of the things when you talked about vision with me, I love to say to people is just say to yourself, I'm going to work on this for three years. And the reason why I say that is it just takes the pressure off. Now, the reality is most of it comes at you a lot sooner than, than that. But you're not like, oh, I've listened to this podcast today and I've got to go do all the self-help I can in this next week because I need to get out of this by next week. Guess what? You're still in the wrong frequency. Just say, hey, I'm going to go on a journey. And, and we're doing this for the rest of our life, both you and I. We're going to have moments where we're not skillful where we are. But again, that's probably because we're growing the levels that we want to grow. And new challenges come at those levels. So you go, hey, I'm developing this skill. So when I get to those challenges, I can handle them with a grace and a poise, which I never had in my previous life. I handle them really like chaotically and lots of times looking back, oh, not really proud of the way I did that. But hey, I didn't know any other way and I repeated it. <laughs> it just like you said, it's a pattern, right? And yeah. you have to just disrupt that pattern and you can do that. And, and we're living proof, folks, that you can absolutely do that. So one last question I'd like to ask you before mm. we bring this one for a close. Lee, I, once again, I just want to express gratitude for grad jumping on here today. I just knew this was going to be a fun conversation. Hopefully we'll be able Thank to you. get you back on and go a little bit deeper into a lot of these subjects. I've got so many questions in my mind. Thank you. But at the same time, we're almost close to an hour already in the episode. It's and it's flown like, by. It's some, flown yeah, by. <laughs> it absolutely has flown by, which once again is a sign that we're in the right track. But please leave the listeners with a thought of – so. In the very beginning with your story, I mentioned that it's it was when you were discovered that the life and the path that you were on, when you changed your thoughts, you began to change your exterior world. Can you think of, so if someone's hearing that and you're like, okay, what, what do you say to yourself? How do you do something like that? Is there a certain thing or a pattern that you set in place to try to help you, yourself with that internal dialogue yeah. to kind of set yourself apart and begin this awareness journey uh, to looking for being able to respond versus react. A lot of the things we discussed today. Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah, absolutely. So even sharing my story today, um, the thing that I always think of is you're greater than any circumstance or challenge that you're faced with. Now, I hope the listeners have picked up on that. Now, cancer, most people hear the C word and go, whoa, that's so big. And I can't believe you looking at the way you did. But the reality was I felt that I was going to be bigger than that. And then if we talked about patterns, football coaching, to being a parent, to being a loving and present husband, to my business, every single one of those has challenges in amongst them. And you're going to, when you're looking at them for the first time or they're hitting you for the first time, it's that moment to be able to stop and go, do you know what? I'm greater than any of these circumstances or challenges I'm facing. They don't feel good right now. Okay, but I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other and just keep getting better and auto-correcting along the way and being unskillful and, oh, I wasn't so good there, but moving straight on. Next one. Just keep doing it. Keep Because when you keep compounding that over a while, all of a sudden you learn, right, here comes the challenge. I know what's coming with it. I'm going to hit it face on. There's no fear, which is one of the most liberating things to let go of. And then you just go, hey, I'm just going to step into it. Is my life always perfect? Actually, yeah, even with the mistakes and the challenges, now I look at them and go, God, that was brilliant. I loved it. 
And I, five years ago, there's no way I would have said that. I was the guy with the losing is not an option t-shirt on. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Thank you for sharing. So folks are out there thinking, okay, Lee is somebody I need to get closer to. I need to learn more from him. Obviously the wisdom and the experiences and the stories that he has to share are fantastic. Just with this conversation we've had today has been a lot of fun, but they're looking for different ways to get connected with you. Tell us more about that. Where can people get in touch with you, learn more about the coaching and services that you provide to the marketplace? Tell us a little bit more about where people can find you. I appreciate the opportunity to share that with you. So thank you. First and foremost, you have to get to know me and the best way to do that's through Instagram. If you're on Instagram or YouTube, I pretty much share the same um, uh, content on both of those platforms. Just watch and see what content resonates with you. It's me sharing what I believe in that day. It comes from all of my challenges and sometimes they're challenges within the week. Um, but I'm hoping that you'd start there, think, do you know what? I want to learn a little bit more from this guy. And if that's the case, I do workshops pretty much every month. They're free. You can come along to a workshop, sit there, get clear on your vision of what you would love because it's not always easy to do it on your own. And it can be that one little tweak or question that I might ask where you'll go, okay, and it's all great. Lots of us have done vision work before, but it's the next step, okay? We can all dream up what we'd love, but if you sit there twiddling your thumbs, it isn't going to happen. There has to be action steps that come with it. Sometimes those are a little bit uncomfortable, but sometimes you don't even have to take uncomfortable ones. We all think we've got to take this giant step and have this giant leap straight away, but it's a succession of smaller steps that get you there. And I gave that to you with the story of the cancer, to the football coaching, to running a business, to creating the relationship that I wanted with my wife and my kids. That pattern is one of the greatest things I've ever learned. So I never look back once and think, that was a difficult period. I look back and go, wow, I'm so glad and grateful I got those challenges because I can share this with everybody else now. That's fantastic. And that URL for yourself, as far as the website for you to get, be caught at, yeah. as far as you mentioned Instagram, what's, what's the handle for everybody to find you? Yeah. So at Lee Willard on YouTube and Instagram, that's L E I G H W O O L A R D. You can pop that in your show notes or something. And the yes, website Lord. is the same www.leewoolard.com. It's a fairly unique name. I don't think there's anyone else out there with it spelt the way mine's spelt. So you'll find me. <laughs> So I love that. So just on a side note, when I was uh, beginning to build out my personal brand and try to obviously be creative online and that kind of thing, Randy Wilson is a little bit more common. Mm. And so I was struggling to find and get domains for my name and, and all those kinds of things on YouTube, though. I will say that I was able to get my name at Randy Isn't Wilson that? on YouTube. I was so surprised when that happened because I, I just, well, I just knew that was going to be an important thing <laughs> moving forward. Right. So yes, folks, as you can tell from this conversation, Lee is full of experience. He's full of wisdom, full of knowledge. He's a continuous learner in some way that can pour into themselves to then be able to internalize, get results in their life, and then pour it back into you is what, in my opinion, is the most important skill set anybody can find. So you, you'll you have people out there trying to tell you how to do certain things that, that they might not even have the results for themselves. And you will quickly discover as you go down this journey of personal development, you'll realize and you'll resonate with the people that are speaking from truth, speaking from wisdom, from experience. And what you'll do is you'll start to set those people that are not coming from that standpoint. You might come across somebody that's trying to get a money grab, right? They're trying to just make some money off of, of your eyeballs or, or their course or their things. You're going to recognize those things pretty quickly. Now, if that happens to you, I'm not, don't judge it. It just, it happens. My point that I'm trying to make with that statement is that you're going to become aware of folks like Lee, hopefully like you're seeing from myself, right? I just try to show up and share my experiences, my stories in hopes that you'll catch an awareness someday with something that I share, a guest that I bring on that who knows where that will lead. That's the beauty of it is I don't know but it's going to be your journey. And that's the most exciting for me. That's the most exciting part that I want to show up and bring as much value to you, the listeners, as I possibly can. So go out there, connect with Lee, leewallart.com. Like I said, we will get all the links in the show notes uh, about following him on, on social, uh, his YouTube, Instagram. Obviously, you can connect with him on uh, his website as well. Get on to one of his masterclasses or his workshops. Begin this journey. It's, it's, 
fun journey. We talked about that today. And if you get in the driver's seat, start taking some small steps. This could be th that one small step. If you're even having any kind of, any kind of thought or feeling that hmm, maybe this is what I need to do, let me encourage you. That is what you need to do. Go get signed up, jump on and join us in the driver's seat of life and start creating things that you never really thought could be possible. But in my reality, and it sounds like from Lee's, they definitely are. And we want to leave you with that encouragement today. So I want to wrap it up here today. Go out there, focus on being great. I look forward to bringing back the next episode and the next guest again to you again very soon. Until then, bye folks. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.